Hi and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to create this very simple infographic in Word. So the first thing we need to do is change this page orientation to landscape. So go to layout, orientation, landscape. Now go up to insert shapes, click on the drop down, scroll down and we're going to select this shape here, click and drag out that shape can be as big or as small as you want, but remember we're trying to get it all on one page. Now I'm going to pop it over in the top left here, and the reason for that is because I'm going to zoom in so we can really see what we're trying to achieve. I'm also just quickly going to go to design, go to page colour. I'm just going to change the background to grey just so that we can see some of the white outlines. So we've got our shape, you can see that we've got a borderline around the outside. We're going to change that. So go to shape format, go to this icon here, which is the outline, go to white, click on the outline again and go to weight and go all the way down to six points. Then go to the shape fill, click on the drop down. Then you've got a range of different colors here. If you don't see the color you want, go to more fill colors. You've got a color wheel here. You can move this little circle any way you like and you can darken and lighten that as well. And then once you've chosen your color, just click OK. So what I've done is I've actually got some recent colors in here. I've just copied those from a swatch from a different infographic, just the colors, and then chosen and put them in here. So I've just got mine here, not including this one here. Next thing, I want to put some text in because eventually we're just going to copy and paste all of these out to make it really quick. So just go to Insert, text box, draw text box, click and draw out the text box. Then insert your text. Then I'm just going to reduce the size of this text. You can of course increase the size of your shape if you need a little bit of extra space because this text at the moment is 10.5 so it's really quite small. And you can see how much room it's taking up. Now, if I deselect this, you can see we've got this black line around the outside in this white background. I'm going to get rid of both of those. So select the square or the rectangle, go to shape format, go to outline and select no outline, shape fill and select no fill, deselect and you can see we're just left with the text. Then I'm going to turn this text white. So just select the text box, go to the home tab, go to font color and select white. Now I think there is actually some more text here. So I can either move the text box out to then maybe see all of the text and move that into the center. Depends how much text you want. So of course you can reduce the size of the text or you can change the font. So some of the fonts, for example, this one here means that all of the characters are quite close together. So if I select that one, you can see it takes up a lot less space but it's the, still the same size. So you have a range of different options. You also have the option that these lines could be closer together, so I can select the text. I can then go to this icon here, which is in the Home tab. I think at the moment it's 1.1. So if you choose 1.0, it will reduce the space between those lines as well, further reducing the amount of space that you need. And then you can play around with the size of this text box to accommodate all of your text. If you've got the same margin at the top and bottom, obviously you can adjust it by going up and down. We can then look to select this, hold down your command and control key and select the big shape. Go to layout, go to align and select align to middle, which will line up these boxes here along the middle. Then align, align to center. Now, if I deselect this, you might not like the text in the center of the shape. You might want it just in the center of this area here, in which case you can select it. Just use your arrow key and just move that text over until you're happy with its placement and deselect. The final thing I'm going to do with this before we start to copy and paste is just add the white line to the end of this shape, which will join the circle. So go to insert shapes, click on the line, Click and draw out a line. If you hold your shift key down, it will join. It will draw a perfect horizontal or vertical. Release it. Then go to shape format. Go to the outline here. 
we can turn it white and then back up to the drop down again and go to weight and select six points. So what you do have to do is try to make sure that this is all lined up here. With this, you can lose the alignment tool again by selecting the larger shape. Hold down the command or control key and select this one. You can see they're fairly lined up, but if you're not sure, go to layout, go to align and select align to middle. And that will make sure they're all perfectly lined up. So now for copy and pasting to make this very simple and easy. We need to group everything together. So select this one, hold down the command or control key, select the big shape and select the line. Now you can just copy and paste from here. Go to the home tab, press copy, deselect, and then press paste. Now I've just done that twice, it's not a problem. And then you can move it all. But the trouble is if I go to this one now and try and move this one, I'm only going to move part of it. So sometimes it actually helps to group them together. And to do that, select all three elements again, go up to layout, go to group and select group. Now this is all one group. We can do another form of copy and pasting, which is where you select the group, hold down your alt or option key, click and drag, and that will copy another one and the same one more time for all five. So some of these texts have moved, so you just need to ungroup them all, but let's put them into place first. So you need to decide how much room you'd like these to take up on your page. I'm just gonna group this one together. Layout, whoops, and group. So you might want them all squashed together like this, or you might want them all further apart. It's completely up to you. What you do want to do is to decide where you want the top one and where you want the bottom one, because from there, we can select them all, holding down the command or control key, go to align. And if you go to distribute vertically, it will make sure there's an equal gap between all of them. And then you can go to align to right. So you can have them all lined up like this if you want to. Alternatively, you can select this one, hold down the command or control key, select this one. Then use your arrow keys just to move those two forward and you can decide how much forward you want them. Do the same with these two, select this one and this one and then again holding down the arrow key you can move those forward so they're in a slight curve to go around the circle. Select the second one down, I need to change the colour. So ungroup it, deselect, reselect this shape Go to Shape Format, Shape Fill, and select your next colour. Then this one as well. Layout, Group, Ungroup, Deselect, Reselect this one. Shape Format, Shape Fill, and select a colour. I'll do that to the next two and speed up the video. So in order to move everything, you're going to have to group everything together. You can go to shape format or layout, go to group and select group. I'm going to speed up the video while I group them all together. Now I've grouped them all together, I'm now going to select all of them again with the command and control key, then group all the groups together. And now I can just move this left or right. But what I can also do is go to align. If I go to align to middle, it's now perfectly lined up in the middle of the page. And you can place it exactly where you want it from the edge of the page there as well. So I'm going to leave that there for a minute. Go to insert, go to shapes, go to the circle, click and hold down the shift key to produce a perfect circle. You can make this as big or as small as you want. And then we're going to produce another one by holding down the alt or option key, clicking and dragging. And there you have a second one. And again, I'm going to make this bigger by holding the corner holding down the shift key and just pulling that out a bit more, popping it over the top. Make sure it's selected and you're on shape format. Go to shape fill and select no fill. And then for this one, we're going to make a gradient, but we have to push it behind this one at the moment, because if I try to click on this middle one here, you can see it won't select. I've selected the outside circle. That's because the outside circle is effectively on top of this. So select it, go to layout, go to send backwards and select center back. 
now when I click on it, you can see I can click on this middle one because I've brought it forward. It's a little bit like layers in Photoshop. So select this circle, go to shape format, go to outline, select white, click on the drop down, weight, click on six. And then for this outline, we're going to see something a little bit different. Select it, go to shape format, go to arrange and go to format pane. Over here, you have a lot more customization tools, but we're going to focus on this one here, which is the bucket icon and the line. Click on line and go to gradient line. You can see there's a default here. And to add or take away one of these color markers, you just use the add or minus sign. I'm going to add one. That's because I've got five colors that I want to add to this gradient. I'll show you how this works. So first of all, let's just zoom down and go to width. And the width of the outline, I'm going to take to six to match everything else. Press enter. And you can see on this line here, we've got this slight gradient that matches this tool here. So what we're going to do is click on the first marker here, go to color, select one of the colors from here, select the second one, and the other colour, just keep going until I've selected all of the colours in my infographic. Again, this is a personal choice, but you can see how I've done it along here and how that's reflected here in this outline. You can make this outline bigger or smaller by increasing or decreasing the width here. Now I'm just going to click on the middle one, hold down the command and control key, click the outer one, Go to layout, go to align, align to center and align, align to middle. Now that's all perfectly lined up. Deselect, I'm going to reselect the middle one because I want to change this center color. And you can do that over here again by using this bucket icon. Go to fill, solid fill, go to the color and select the color of your choice. Then in the center here, I'm going to add some text by adding text boxes. So again, go to insert, text box, draw text box, click and draw out a text box. Then insert my text. I'm just pasting some in here. And you can see if I click on it and go to the home tab, I've used this font here. It's 60 bold. And you can see that I've used the color again from here. So once again, I'm going to deselect it, reselect it, go to shape format, get rid of that black outline color, go to shape fill and select no fill. And now all I'm going to do is to borrow this. So copy and paste it, holding down that alter option key, pop the next set of text in, pop the next set of text in, and again, if I go to the home tab, you can see this text is 48 bold and it's black. And once again, borrow it again and then put in your relevant text. So place your text roughly where you want it, but we will level it all out. Make sure this one is as close or as far away from that one as you want. And again with this one, then all we have to do is select them all, go to layout, align, align to center. That will align them all up to the middle and go to group. This is all now one group, so we can easily select the circle as well, holding down the command or control key, align, align to center, deselect, and then you can simply select it, use your arrow keys to move it up or down, whichever suits. Then we can select everything, all three circles. Go to group, select group. Now this is all one group. We can go to align and then align to the middle of the page. So now this is all lined up. We want to move it towards these arrows or these lines. So we can move it over like this. And then if I zoom in, you can see that this little white section here is just poking out. So if we go and ungroup everything, ungroup all of these sections, deselect, reselect this one and ungroup it. We can deselect it, reselect the line. And then what I like to do with this one is make it 
so that it hits the circle, but it makes one continuous line throughout here. This one here, I'm going to ungroup because if I zoom in, you can see that this line under here is just poking through. So I'm going to select the line, just reduce the size of it a little bit. If you find these lines are on top of this circle, just select them, go to send backwards and select center back and it will send it behind the circle. Again, with this one, I need to ungroup it, reselect the line and move it. This one, you need to ungroup, deselect, reselect the line and again, do exactly the same, make one continuous line along here to link with the circle. Once you're happy with the design, let's go to design. Let's take off the page color. The page color will only color the page in Word. If you printed this out, it would still print as white. So you've actually got to put a background behind it. So select no color, then go to insert, shapes, select the square, click and draw out a rectangle that will cover the entire page. Make sure it has covered the page. Then go back over to shape format over here. If you can't see it, go to shape format and format pane. Go to the fill and go to gradient fill. And I've rehearsed this before, which is why we've got all this up now. So what I've done is I've selected a linear gradient. And then in here, I've selected the line that goes from right to left. You can play around with all of these. Apologies, you can't see them all. In here, I've selected it and selected white. And with this one, I've selected this gray here and I've moved it slightly over. Once I'm happy with that, I just need to send it to the back. So go to layout, send backwards, center back. Now you can go ahead and select everything and group it all together. You can go ahead and change all of the text. You can recolor all of the colors if you're not happy with them. And then you can move all the text boxes, which makes it really flexible. You can save this out as a Word document, a PDF, or a template. I've got other videos on how to save these as a template, but I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.